Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Michaela Nicole, and today we are going to be doing a What's in My Toolbox video for camera restoration. So, coming off of the trilogy that you just got to see, I thought this would be a really great video to talk through the things that I have accumulated that I use in almost every camera restoration or will continue to use in every camera restoration since the last project with the QB number 2A. So I have this table, this cart that you'll see in my studio tour video, but I call it a table, my boyfriend calls it a cart, but it has all these drawers in it that I have organized with all my stuff. So I'm just going to go drawer by drawer and tell you about what I've got in here and what I use it for and if I think it's a worthy investment or not. So in my first big drawer, I have a lot of cleaning materials. So things like paper towels, really helpful, especially when you're rust removing. I have these vinyl gloves, which is definitely not a necessity, but when I was doing the rust removal, as you would have seen in the last, in the second video of the QB restoration, um, and in the spray painting and all that stuff, um, I would get these little cuts in my hand from the metal bits that I was using in the Dremel, and then I was blowing rust dust everywhere when I was grinding it off, and I just didn't want to risk that getting into those wounds unnecessarily. So these came in very helpful. I highly recommend if you're going to get into some of the more in-depth aspects of camera restoration, get yourself some latex or acrylic vinyl gloves, whatever these are. And as as you should probably know, they're not like sterile gloves or anything. Um, they're literally just for dirt protection, which is the equivalent of what I'm needing. So they're a lot looser, but they work really well for spray painting, rust removal, all that jazz. And then I've got my trusty dusty rubbing alcohol that you've seen in almost every video. Um, this is 70%, but as I've said before, you probably would do better to have a higher percent than that. I use my rubbing alcohol for any metal or plastic pieces to clean them. It's really useful. It was really useful after doing the vinegar cleaning solutions to take that and wipe down everything and just make sure that it was clean. It also kind of prevents you from making mud on your cameras if they're dirty because it evaporates so fast you're not just like smearing dirt everywhere. And alongside that I have these which my container is very empty right now because I used almost all of them in the QB restoration but these are reusable cotton rounds that are basically just like little microfiber cloths and they're washable so they have like a little pouch that you can put them in and throw them in the washer or you can hand wash. So I found this to be really useful because I wasn't just blasting through cotton balls. They don't leave fibers behind like a cotton ball or a cotton pad or q-tip would. Um, and they're just really good for broad surfaces. I still use q-tips for the small areas but yeah that is just a helpful thing. So that is what I've got in my surface level cleaning drawer rubbing alcohol and cotton rounds, gloves, as you should, and paper towels. Now, still in these two big drawers that I've got, I have the only thing in this drawer is distilled white vinegar <laughs> and a bucket with rusty vinegar in it. <laughs> Which has been, it's really weird. Okay, so obviously vinegar, this is clear. Um, the reason it's in a drawer by itself is because it stinks. And I am I can handle the smell of rubbing alcohol, but the smell of white vinegar is really not great. So it's in a drawer by itself, so it doesn't infect everything else to smell that way. But I have this old, this is from like a deli meat container. Like an old lunch meat container. And it goes, I just dumped a bunch of, vinegar in there that would cover the surface of all of the metal pieces I was using it for, let them sit in there for a long time, and then scrub them with a toothbrush, and 
it was a really effective way to get rust off of all those metal parts. So yeah, this was a really effective way to get rust out of all those pieces. It is surprisingly effective. Like even if you've got two pieces that are rusted together, if you just throw them in there, it'll get them detached pretty well. So I highly recommend a vinegar bath. You can also put vinegar in a spray bottle and spray surfaces or use like a paintbrush and paint it on. Um, but you don't want it to like evaporate so you kind of have to keep it like in there if that makes sense. So if you can't get a metal piece out that's kind of a way to do it. It's just gonna take more babysitting than this where you can just throw it in there and like leave it overnight and come back. Um, so yeah, vinegar. Vinegar is a great cleaning tool for your cameras if they're rusted to all crap. Now moving on to my small objects. In my top drawer, I have it very organized. So in this first container, I have these little screwdrivers. Let me block my face. I have mini screwdrivers. I have six of them. They're all of different sizes and different uh, styles of head of screw ability. Um, but I found these to be really useful um, as a tool to like pry if you use the flathead ones. These are really itty bitty. Uh, I just got them at Home Depot. And they're super small but they're really long so you can get around pieces and unscrew things. And I also used them to lever out pieces that I couldn't get unstuck from each other so that was pretty useful. And then the other thing in this container is my rust toothbrush. <laughs> um, it's obviously disgusting because I used it to get rust off of things. And I've got these two stamps that I 3D printed. Well, the 3D printed handle and the stamp are both in this container too for now. That we used from the QP to a restoration. So that is all I've got in that little container. In the next one, I have a ton of paintbrushes and a pencil. So I've just got these paintbrushes of different sizes and shapes. Um, they're just from Walmart. What brand are these? Crafter's Choice um, paintbrushes. And I just got them so that I could use them solely for camera restoration stuff and not have to worry about ruining any nice paintbrushes of mine. The other thing in this are a makeup brush, which I use for dust removal. It is very dusty and disgusting. And a pencil, because you never know. You always need a pencil. I wrote all over the inside of the QD uh, to remind myself of things for when we put it back together. So pencils. Pencils will always come in handy. And these plastic containers, in case anyone's just wondering, are from Walmart. And they've got these little grippy plastic rubbery feet on them. So that's really nice because they don't slide around in my um, drawer whenever it opens and closes. So that's nice. Let's continue on with my little buckets. I have two smaller buckets. These are light up reverse tweezers, so when you press them they open and when you aren't they're shut, which is just nice for holding things and there is a little light on them so that you can see what you've got in there. And then also in here is my dropper, which I use sometimes to put rubbing alcohol on my um, makeup brush if I'm trying to get rubbing alcohol into anything that has a lot of grooves. I've got two Dremel bits. The third one is still attached to the Dremel right now. Um, but this one is the metal wire brush-esque one and this is just a sanding sanding disc. So those are in that one. And then this one just has Q-tips in it. Regular old Q-tips. Behind that stuff not in its own container. I just have some screws. Don't worry about it. You you never know. They're just some screws. I was doing some tests on them for colors for that QP video. And I've got this, which is a snot sucker for like babies. You know, you stick it up the nose and suck it out. But I use it to blow air out of and get dust out of things. And it's not the most precise tool, but it does do a pretty good job in a pinch. And lastly in this drawer, I have my uh, skewer, <laughs> which needs to get painted, but this is just for my camera videos. Um, I use it to point things out when my nails are gross or when I can't reach something. And I have an X-Acto knife uh, covering the blade in case that's upsetting to anyone, but 
just a regular old exacto knife you never know when you're gonna need one I obviously haven't used it yet but when it comes time well by the time you're seeing this video this will have been opened and used for the QB restoration but at this current moment in time that video actually has not even been made yet the camera is still sitting in shambles next to me so yeah that's in the first drawer my second drawer I have these brushes, which are a little scary looking, they're from Home Depot, and this one will be the easiest to show you. They're just these metal brushes that all serve different purposes um, for rust removal, basically. Um, this one is more of a cleaning brush. The bristles are not made of metal. The black one, they're like a nylon. And then this one is another metal brush um, that is very pointy and sharp, similar to the Dremel bits. And I just got these to help me with rust removal and stuff, um, to do stuff by hand if I can't get it out of a camera. I thought this would be an effective way to do some surface level stuff, and also relatively effective when I do the uh, vinegar baths. Using this nylon brush might be helpful, but I liked that they have two ends, the larger one and the smaller one. It gives me more options of ways to use it, so I'm very excited for those. So those are from Home Depot. They are the brand Anvil. Also in this drawer, I've got two disposable masks and my Dremel, which is not my Dremel, but it's a Dremel. And as you can see, it's just got the other Dremel bit, metal brush. This one's a wheel. And yeah, this is a Dremel Multi Pro model. $3.95 in case anyone's interested, but that's what's in that drawer, and I use that for rust removal before the vinegar bath to get a lot off, and then I do the vinegar, and then do that. I have not tried doing the vinegar first and then dremeling. Um, I'm sure it would be as effective. And then, like I said, just disposable masks, you know, they're amp in ample supply because of pandemic times, so, you know. You love them, you hate them, but they're useful for rust removal so you don't inhale the rust and have issues. My last drawer has all of my aerosol paints, basically, and other paints. So I've just got spray paints in here. Um, I've got an automotive primer that I've been using on the metal pieces to keep the spray paint on. I've also got this uh, Gorilla Glue spray adhesive that has been used for sticking the leatherette to the surface of this camera. And then I've got a couple of acrylic paints that we got just as a tester to see if that's the color we wanted to use. I got a couple different kinds and obviously it's not what we ended up going with. But those are here too in case I ever decide I need a bright blue camera. And I also have regular blue painter's tape just because you never know. And, yeah, something that I think would be beneficial to add to this setup would be some safety goggles, but I do wear glasses, so I was just wearing those while I did this. But I did get stabbed with some stuff <laughs> while I was doing my restoration. But yeah, that's everything I've got in my camera restoration toolbox. The most beneficial things that I use all the time are leather wipes and rubbing alcohol. The things that I think I will use the most coming up will be the rust removal supplies. That's a new uh, venture I've got going, so that's fun and exciting and something new to do. Um, and the things I use the least are probably things like paint brushes and compressed air, that kind of thing. Um, they can be useful, but I just don't personally use them that much. I find other methods that seem to work better. So yeah, if you're going to start, the place I would start would be with the exterior cleaning. And then once you feel a little more confident in your abilities to disassemble and reassemble these cameras, that's when I would go and start investing in some of the stuff for the more intense restoration, like screwdrivers that are that small and... Um, the rust removal supplies, of course vinegar is an easy, cheap alternative to the chemicals that you can get, and a lot of that stuff that I have is supposed to be a cheaper alternative to things like 
uh, those rust remover uh, jellies and things that you can paint on stuff um, because I would prefer not to use those kind of chemicals and these are just easy cost-effective ways to do what I'm doing so I'm sure there's probably a camera restoration expert out there that's cringing at what I do um, but this is just what I've learned over the last ooh, probably six years of me collecting and doing this camera thing and it's what I've learned through the internet and through people around me who know more about this kind of stuff than I do so hopefully somebody found this helpful let me know if you have any fast facts or tips in the comments of how you do your camera restorations and thank you so so much for watching I hope you enjoyed this video uh, go like it subscribe comment share it with your friends before you go and I will see you next week with another video thank you for watching Goodbye!